Okay. We are now live. Welcome. Hello, 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 everybody. Science of Mind Magazine. Good to see all of you and everyone here. Reverend Zavanna, Reverend Abigail, Jafan, Reverend Amanda, Reverend Masando. Abigail, love to have you kick us off with an invocation. I'd be delighted. All right. So just taking a deep breath. Hmm. And centering in this moment on the presence of the infinite great creator. I recognize and know that in this infinite great creator, all possibilities reside. Every opportunity, every idea, everything that has been said and everything yet to be said. I recognize and know that this time together on this Science of Mind Facebook live feed is a time to really unfold the deep wonder and amazement that is spirit's highest calling for all of us as we step into feeling and knowing and connecting to our heart space i recognize and know that there's an unfolding of spiritual resilience for each and every one of us here on this call and each and every person who is listening in the future that all of us tap into that one awareness of that divine beautiful unfolding the perfect harmony between the dark and the light, the interplay between that which is yet to manifest and that which already has. I recognize and know that this is a point of creation and that this is a perfect time and a perfect conversation for us to have. It flows easily and effortlessly, brilliantly and beautifully, and everything is in perfect flow. I'm grateful to know that we are all here on the right place at the right time with the right people and it is divinely guided and blessed. And for that, I'm grateful. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Um, so what's up, everybody? Uh, Reverend Masando here. So good to see you again on this Facebook uh, live channel with the Science of Mind magazine. Uh, I have the honor of introducing our special guest today, uh, Reverend Savannah Riker has been a good friend of mine. Uh, we both grew up uh, in Colorado together, uh, both went to Mile High Church uh, as teenagers. Uh, we had some overlap in college studying religious studies together and uh, also did ministerial school for about a year as well. Uh, she has been just kicking butt out there doing her ministry thing all over the world. She was actually on the cover of the Science of Mind magazine, uh, I think, yeah, like five years ago now, which is crazy. Uh, she was talking about her time living in Egypt, uh, and she lived in Egypt during the Arab Spring, so a, a really interesting time, really exciting time, a really crazy time to be, to be in that part of the world, uh, and uh, her her article was about the sacred amidst the shadow, amidst the darkness, really about finding the sacred in, in the midst of darkness. Uh, feels a little relevant <laughs> now in this time. She is currently up in Seattle uh, at an Amazing Grace Spiritual Center. Uh, she's an associate minister there, just got up there a couple months ago. Uh, and I got a lot of love for that city as well. So we're just so honored and blessed to have her be a part of this conversation. So yeah, yeah welcome Reverend Savannah. Thanks Thank for you being so here. much. Such a beautiful introduction. I've been wanting to, to be part of this group for a while. So um, I love what you guys have all been doing. So thanks for the invitation. It's exciting. For sure. <laughs> for sure. So Nick, you want to kick us off here? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, it, um, such a great, uh, such a great introduction, such a great prayer, such a great way to kind of kick into this idea of what we thought to talk about this month is spiritual resilience. Um, the uh, the idea that many of us, uh, the kind of rea the immediate reaction to that was like, well, what is what is what is that all about? You know, what is that? What what comes up for that? Uh, and so it'd be just a great conversation to, especially right now, uh, begin to to have a dialogue not only about resilience, but you know, what does it mean in our uh, in our ways uh, uh, ways and being in science of mind. Uh, to bring that to the world in a spiritual sense. So um, love to kick that off. Uh, and um, and Jafan, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call on you a little bit here uh, to kind of kick us off because the what you shared when we were kind of chatting about this a little bit, I think was a really great way to kind of um, give some perspective you know to what came up for you in spiritual resilience. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that that word resilience has been, we've been talking about it a lot, especially in our current circumstances, many people sheltered in place and quarantine and looking at what once was and what is going to be in the days ahead. And in the whole process of asking myself, what does spiritual resilience mean to me? It, it really was centered around this idea of being able and willing, perhaps willing is the, the better word, to maintain an empowered spirit in spite of adversity, in spite of trials or tribulations that may be appearing. So how can we begin to remain empowered regardless as to what is taking place around us? And as I was expanding upon that thought, I, I asked, well, where does the strength within us or the energy come from that enables us to be empowered? And if we think of science of mind, uh, centers for spiritual living, any spiritual path for that matter, there's this inner essence and energy that is dwelling within each and every one of us, as Reverend Abigail said in the, the beginning prayer, and as many of us are, are aware and, and, and attentive of. So where is that strength found and how can we begin to harness and embrace it in such a way that we can continue forward and be empowered, not be a victim to the circumstances that may be happening around us? Because from that perspective, it's very difficult for an individual to be empowered and a victim at the same time. It's like one of the two is going to tilt the scale. And we have the ability to respond differently instead of reacting habitually. And in that process of responding, it allows us to connect to the present moment. And from that present moment is where the magic happens, so to say, where our thoughts, our choices, our emotions, our actions all come from this moment. And through those particular aspects, we have the ability to begin in the co-creation process of our reality. And um, so it's not necessarily about like, well, what are the behaviors that I need to embrace to be resilient? From my perspective, it's more so, what are the internal shifts that must take place within me that will transform what is taking place within my being in such a way that the behaviors that I then show up with are resilient in nature? That inner shift is something that's so, so powerful. And mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of uh, sharing a lot here, but I would love to hear what you all think with regards to resilience and, and spiritual resilience that that word spiritual means so much and I'm sure we could take many hours trying to <laughs> capture that word in its essence yeah well I feel like Jafon you just gave us the whole sermon like you 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 shared I mean really like um gosh there's so much wisdom in what you just said and so many uh truths um that i know that i've been preaching about leaning into especially about the power of the moment and the power to respond as opposed to react i think for me when i think of the word resilient i think um it's like a bouncing back it's like uh, the metaphor that i was talking about earlier of the planet and nature and how um, our ecology and our ecosystem has a, has a natural way of working itself out. And if we think about that in terms of the order that we understand that life works in, that there's a divine pattern, there's a divine order, there's a divineness, you know, right action to everything. I find it um, really cool to think about that in terms of, well, when I add the word spiritual to resilience, for me, it's, it's looking at how many moments in my life have I been able to tap into where I could prove to myself that I was resilient, where I could prove time and time again that I could come back to a truth, to an inner knowing. So for me, it's about um, coming back to truth. It's, it's about coming back to principle constantly, but it's a moment by moment choice. So it's, a, it's like a pivot. So when I start to go down um, the spiral of the fear and the uncertainty and the unknown that we're all experiencing some form or fashion, I then have the ability to pivot and make a new decision, um, think a new thought, and um, lean into what I know. So I think for me, it's, um, it's about trusting the process and the power of life as my life, because I've seen it, I've experimented with this science so many times that I know it will not fail me. And so I think that's what I lean into. I'm gonna jump off that. That was really good, Savannah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, it's, um, to me, just both on Jafon and what Savannah was saying, it's, it's really embracing the wholeness that life is. So 
Um, I've been really studying the divine feminine for a long time. And what I recognize about the divine feminine is it's the space of creation. And it's also the space where things fall apart and come together before something new is birthed. Mm. And it's just important to have the divine feminine as it is to have the divine masculine. So the divine masculine is the place that is kind of the moving us forward where the divine feminine is sitting and allowing spirit to to create in the midst of the of the not moving right so it's it's actually the the winter time when the roots of the trees are are growing deeper um it's a time in the in the womb when the baby is is um gestating and so uh, but it's also not necessarily the most pleasant time like really uh it doesn't it may be it may be great, but it also might not be. It might be painful and it might be difficult and it might be challenging. And so um, I, I feel like spiritual resilience is about embracing both aspects of, of, of life. Like we're gonna have times in our life when we're moving forward and we're like charging ahead. And then there's gonna be something that happens that causes us to stop and, and be present and to and to reevaluate and and maybe upgrade our systems internally our spiritual systems you know uh and and to and to know that that's part of the process so it's not like a bad thing like it's really an appropriate thing to have happen and i feel like that's what's happening on our planet right now like we're going through this 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 big upheaval and this big i'm going to say upgrade but in the in the big upgrade, it's messy, it's challenging, it's it's difficult. And in order for me to get through a really challenging like time like this and be resilient, I have to have that perspective that what's going on isn't bad or good, that it's part of something that is emerging that's new and different. Um, and so really being in that place of, of allowing the fullness of life to unfold and not having it bring me down like it's the worst thing happening, but really to be present with that. And, and also I wanna put, there's, there's a grief component as well. So, so as we move into a new phase, leaving the old phase, there's gonna be grief. So there will be sadness and there will be, um, uh, you know, that transitory time of, of feeling the uncomfortableness of it. But, but embracing that is like, that's just part of the process. And it's okay, I'm grieving right now. That's, that's what I need to do. Because in order for me to move forward, I need to grieve. And I need to be here. And I need to allow myself to be open to what the next thing is. So that's my two cents. I'm looking straight at Amanda. <laughs> I can jump I, I was waiting for I wanted a guy to speak at some point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I can jump in. Like, I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, what are we on here in Denver? Week eight of stay at home, and now we're at safer at home, which is basically the same exact thing. Um I don't even know what the difference is, other than there was like a restaurant in Castle Rock that decided to open up and Colorado got all this horrible press. <laughs> I'm wearing my Colorado hat right now. Uh, but we got all this press uh, about uh, a restaurant that opened up that was just like packed this past weekend. But you know, I was thinking about, I was like, oh, this past weekend was interesting, right? It was the first holiday uh, that happened since all this began, right? Like Mother's Day. And it was like, it was a harder day uh because to me like holidays are the days where we want to be all together and um there's a part of me that just wants everything to go back to normal especially during those days right and i think uh, i think i have had to have some resilience this week uh because i was getting stir crazy i was getting annoyed with people I was wanting to be outside because it's getting sunnier uh, and just feeling frustrated by it all. And then looking at, you know, what's going on in the world and how this thing is becoming politicized in our country. 
<laughs> and so like now there's all of these political lines that are re-emerging, right? That seem to die down for a little bit uh, at the beginning of this. Uh, and, you know, us humans were like, no, nah, we're just gonna keep doing what we've been doing. Let's continue the fight. Uh, and it was discouraging to me. Um, and this, this sense of like resilience uh, was coming up. I was, I watched this uh, short sermon by Nadia Bowles Weber who comes out of the Lutheran world. She's actually local here in Denver too. Uh, she's a pretty big deal. She's a badass. Uh, but she was talking about this concept uh, that actually comes out of the good to great books called the Stockdale Paradox. And the Stockdale Paradox comes from some POWs uh, you know, that spent years and years as, a pr as, as prisoners of war. Uh, and this particular uh, so, uh, guy uh, that talked about the Stockdale Paradox was basically talking about how you would think that the ones that were like fully optimistic all the time would be the ones that would make it, right? The ones that had like the most positive attitude were the ones that would make it. And he said, those are the ones that actually were the most devastated uh, all the time. Because what happens is, is, is like, it's like if only we can get to four weeks or if only we just get to eight weeks or if only we just get to three months and then all of those times continue to pass and the devastation from that is more psychologically devastating, right? Uh, and, and impactful. Then having a little bit more of a balanced uh, approach, which says, hey, like this is exactly what we're going through. We have to like deal with the truth of that, but we cannot give up hope, right? So honestly, resilience for me, and that for whatever reason really resonated with me this week when I was just like, ugh, I was like sick of this lockdown. Just like sick of it. I'm like, I'm done. This is, I'm done, right? I get it's what we need to do, but psychologically I'm done, right? Uh, but I have, to, I, I have to be like real in that. I have to continue to inform myself uh, with what is going to be best for the whole. Uh, and at the same time, I can't give up hope, right? Like that's what really has been coming through to me is what look what spiritual resilience looks like is uh, unapologetically hopeful about the future, but also like dedicated to continuing to be so real and open to what's what's actually true in this moment and not just spiritually bypassing my way into a nice happy thought. And that's actually what creates resilience is being able to have both of those things. So that's what I've been sort of walking through this week and it's felt really good. And hope feels deeply important right now. And it's probably the spiritual aspect that I'm leaning into uh, the most. And that feels good. Yeah, so I also had like not the greatest week. Um, LA County, Los Angeles, we're, we're officially at stay at home until the end of July, until July now, until the end of June. So yesterday I was like, oh, okay. This is like, I knew it was coming, but like reality is here. Welcome, welcome to July. Welcome to your quarantine birthday, probably happening at the end of July. Like you, you've just arrived. <laughs> And I, and I knew, like I, I've been saying, like this is happening till fall and trying to like come, come to that piece of, with it. And then when I think about spiritual resilience and like so many of the spiritual friends that I've been in conversation with, it's, it's always been this conversation about we've done this work, we've come this far, we've built up these stores to get us through this thing, like to, to be the image of the person walking through the flames, to be unscathed. And, and it's not like that. Like that's, that's actually not true. We don't ever just walk through the flames and not get burned. We don't feel the pain of it. We don't feel the heat of it. And, and I think that the idea of resilience is that willingness to really be present with it, right? Like beekeepers get stung. Like people have to be present with, with that pain. Um, and Father Richard Rohr, who's one of my favorite Enneagram teachers, he's, he's from, he lives in Albuquerque, which is where I used to live. And he talked about being a large enough vessel for all of it, right? For all of the experiences of life, like creating space, not just in the world, but within ourselves to be present with all of these things, to be present with the flames, to be present with all of the beauty of life. And that's actually when we expand and we grow to be present with all of those things, that's how we can be really present to the wealth that is in all of them. And so, and, 
and it really is that willingness to be present with the heat of it and the pain of whatever we're going through and understanding that that's not going to break us like that's that's a real understanding of the resilience right that i know that i can be with this pain um and it's not going to define any of it for me it doesn't even define this moment because even being present with this pain there's so much beauty on the other side of that there's so much that's growing in depth and growing out that's going to blossom from it that that this resilience is that it's this willingness to just be present with this whole thing and let it become what it's going to become knowing that it's not the truth of any of it not the truth of me or this moment and and the more that we can do that i just i love the idea of being a big enough vessel for all of the all of the experiences of life like that's what our resilience is and it's not that i have done all of this work up until this moment to survive but it's that i know when there is a moment right here and right now where that work not doing it for me <laughs> and i get to walk over and like and be present with the work again and be called into it again to be called into prayer to be called into mindfulness whatever that is and and really grow from there so so that's that's what that is for me is that willingness not just to be present with the truths that i already know but to be willing to break myself open to whatever truth is waiting for me in this moment as well to, to grow from that yeah, that's me. Um, there's a few things that everybody's expressions like pop these seeds in my mind that like sprout into new thoughts and ideas, which I think is such a beautiful thing to be in a community or in a circle or in a Zoom interaction with individuals and have conversations because it's going to spark new ideas that we can we can tap into and a few, Masanda, you mentioned, I don't know what the book was that you mentioned, but I was- Good to great, good to great. Right, and I was thinking of um, something actually that Megan mentioned in the comments with regards to Viktor Frankl. And instead of being like this uh, romantic, optimist, positive, nonstop, and having like a realistic assessment as to what's taking place around, there's this uh, expression from Man's Search for Meaning, and I may butcher this quote or idea, but it's, um, he mentioned in the concentration camps, the individuals who were able to survive were those who recognized that the last human freedom that cannot be taken from you unless you relinquish control and give it away is what is taking place within your mind, your, your mental attitude. And individuals would have this like aura of, of peace, so to say, or of positive energy, but not crazy positivity where it's like, all right, like you need to tone it back a couple couple notches. Um, but it's so fascinating to think about what we have been continuously absorbing throughout this time. I'm thinking for myself, the various articles and media and uh, conspiracy ideas and some, some things that may be very real and, and truthful and bombarded with all of this information and as science of mind teaches that which you continuously fill your mind with it will eventually spill out and color your reality or your experience and so the the process of embracing that that um that aspect that victor frankel mentioned of that last human freedom as to embracing what is taking place in terms of your mental attitude is is so powerful and beautiful and uh, Savannah mentioning prior to our conversation when we jumped on live, the nature analogy and just thinking of how imperative, and this kind of aligns with what Reverend Abigail mentioned as well, how imperative darkness actually is to the human experience. It's not all like this smooth sailing ocean that you do not have to worry about currents or winds or storms or hurricanes or another person who does not have your best interest in mind. But if we look out into nature, we recognize that the darkness is the very thing that helps for life to unfold from a seed. Many people are planting gardens right now, putting that seed in the darkness of the soil before it can reach towards the light. The earth is sitting in the immense darkness of the universe. All of us had the privilege to be in the darkness of our mother's womb before we were able to be birthed into this experience. And if we look back through our life, we can begin to recognize that those dark moments of time in our lives help to catapult us, or as I like to say, springboard us into a, hopefully a greater realization or, or version of ourselves. 
that is always there. So um, those are a few things and I, I have a lot more to say, but you know, there's six of us and we all have some yeah. great. So. Well, just jumping off of that, I think um, what I love about that is that the darkness or even just the contrast of experience um, is the place where I get to ask that question of, well, what is it, what is, what is just sitting here? What is the quality and the aspect of life that I need to tap into to get me through this experience? And maybe it is that resilience, but it also could be other things like patience or clarity. Um, for me, my darkness has served me so well. My pain has provided information. My suffering has, has given me um, purpose, um, I think, to wake me up and also for me to really understand what it means um, when we say that there's nothing in the world that love can't heal. So I, I find that um, it's easy for us, I know Mike uh, mentioned this earlier, to spiritually bypass a lot of the stuff we're experiencing, the grief and the loss. But what I'm finding in this experience is um, it's like a test of my own inner conviction of what I say I believe and what I say, like, I mean, Amanda, you pointed this out too, as far as like, this is our moment, this is our time. We've been, we've been um, studying and learning about um, spiritual principles and acting and um, teaching them for years. And now it's the time where we really get to go, okay, what is it that needs to be birthed through me? What is it, what is the quality of the aspect that I am becoming because of the darkness, because of the uncertainty, because I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not always feeling like I'm on solid ground. So then it just leads us to the question of, well, what's the opportunity? You know, as always, what is the opportunity in this and the gift? Um, Cause like you, Mike, I, I remain hopeful. I think that's just part of my, my nature, my demeanor, um, just always seeing the silver lining and always seeing that there's a light, there's light in the midst of all of it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. The, the, for me, the, right now, the, the idea of, you know, of, um, the resilience part is part of our human experience. It's part of what we're you know doing and, it, you know, and just to be able to acknowledge and have conversations about, you know, what that means to each and every one of us, you know, helps to, to bring light to that topic. Because I think that, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, in my conversations here a lot lately is, you know, there's still a lot of focus on the dark, you know, uh, and it's not, not trying to take the focus away from that, not trying to turn, you know, saying that it's not there, bypassing it, you know, whatever term we, we, we use on that. But how do we continue to bring, um, you know, as, as Reverend Abigail has talked about, like that the presence of now, that divine feminine of now, the divine feminine of, of you know, of, of, uh, of feeling it with the you know, divine masculine of the forward movement and where we're going, you know? And so, you know, as we've all talked about, we're all, you know, practicing and doing these, these components uh, in our own way, with our own communities, with our own work. And, um, you know, I still, you know, it still hits me every, every afternoon, you know, of, okay, so far today has been a good one you know, or you know, what's the opportunity for what's happened so far today, you know, or, or you know, uh, but, but for me to not get to, I can, I'm getting this idea a lot lately of like, am I ignoring something? Um, because there, because there's just, there's a lot that's happening in, in my world and with the folks that I interact with. And so, you know, I'm kind of, they kind of heads down in that. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm asking myself, you know, what, what is the, uh, is there, just because there may not be an experience of pain or experience of challenge, you know, uh, it's evident is am I ignoring something you know and um yeah it just continues to I really appreciate all the feet all the comments today about this just this continual topic of what does this resilience in the spiritual form you know look like for all of us what are we birthing what are we seeding what are we creating you know what are we bringing into the light you know you know when when this all hit it I I love Savannah how she put like like this is really kind of like our opportunity to be, um, you know, what is, what do I really believe in? And what are my behaviors and how, how am I, you know, am I reacting or am I responding, right? Like Jafon was talking about. And, and what, what happened to me is that when everything went, you know, we went to this place of, you know, at least at my center, we're translating everything online, right? And, and, and while a lot of people had to stop doing things um, we are, we were ramping up doing more stuff, trying to figure out how to, how to translate 
you know, spiritual experiences to online experiences whenever they've been so in person. And, um, and, and what I noticed is that our, our leadership, our practitioners were, were hit really hard. And the practitioners were the ones who were supposed to be, um, you know, the, the, the spiritual um, ecclesiastical arm in the community, right? They're the ones helping everybody else. And I'm there helping the practitioners. And I'm like, oh my God, the practitioners are a mess. <laughs> and, and then um, I realized I was a mess. I was a complete mess. I was like, uh, you know, there was just so much going on. It was a lot of change happening at the same time. Um, and then I noticed that I was uh, having, I, what's, what's the nice way of putting it? It was um, um, unskilled behavior. So um, I've taught myself in ministerial school and through all these, um, through working with science mind, is many healthy skilled behavior ways of being. And um, I was plummeted into unskilled behavior in, in the first few weeks. And I had to, um, oh my God, I apologize to so many people. <laughs> Just, I was, I was rude and, and mean and like, Oh, it was so messy. And I'm like, what is going on with me? And I realized that, that, you know, that was grief. There was like a collective grief. I, you know, I didn't lose my job. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to, to, to still have my job. You know, I didn't have that kind of grieving. Everybody in my family's healthy. I didn't have that kind of grieving. So, so all the things that normal grief would, would stir, which a lot of people are experiencing already on the planet. Um, I didn't have that and yet I was still feeling that grief and I was I was behaving in ways that were erratic and unusual and I wasn't eating well and I wasn't taking care of my body and I, you know and it's taken me a while to to find myself to find my grounding to find my footing to 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 establish new behaviors that are healthy and well for me and um it's, I mean, and I'm, so I feel like I'm, I'm three, I'm three weeks on the healthy and well wagon. And even in, when I finally started getting new behaviors, I still had all of that grief to process through. And, and, um, and I got a, a health issue that came up and, and I realized I wasn't processing my feelings. So, and, and I'm like, I'm a minister, like I, I'm professionally trained to deal with this stuff. So, so how's that affecting everybody else in the world? You know, so, so what it means to me is that I need to uh, really focus on making sure I have my practices in place. And I also, my heart of compassion is so much bigger for everybody. Like, like yes, if you're upset at the grocery store and you're rude to me, like it's totally okay because I get it, you know, <laughs> like I totally understand. And, and we're all going through it. We're all kind of like little fuzzy, you know, what is it? Fuzzy edges, frizzed edges. Um, but that's okay because it's like, it's part of the process. And if I can just understand that everybody's going through this at the same time and in different levels, uh, my heart just cracks open so deeply for, for everybody else. And so I'm much more um, in the space of gratitude, like that's really where I need to continue to bring myself to. And I have been bringing myself to that space of gratitude of what I do have, what I can control, of what, you know, and, and, and tuning my awareness to like um, good news and positive things that other people are doing and really, really making a conscious choice to find that because it's actually going on in a much greater degree than I've ever seen before. Um, and that has really helped me in the midst of this be resilient. So thanks for bringing up that whole authentic experience, Masando and Amanda. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And yeah, I, uh, <laughs> you know, going through just uh, emotional, psychologically challenging week last week, um, it made me make room for lots of other people's experiences actually right because i'm like wow like this is how i'm coping right like i'm acting weird i also had to apologize uh, many times uh, this past week um you know what we do when we're when we're stressed uh like our best selves don't always show up 
but part of the spiritual growth and resilience, right, is um, just taking as much as we can accountability and responsibility for when we're not showing up. Abigail is brilliant at that. She has modeled that to me uh, so many, not that she's had to say sorry so many times, but I've seen her just be this really beautifully accountable, like, which is a courageous thing to do. It's, it's, it's hard to admit when we haven't shown up as our best self and then go and like make it right. You know, and so <laughs> I look out in the world, I check out my news feed. Uh, people may not be showing up as their best selves right now. And uh, there's a part of me that's just like, all right, like I have compassion uh, for what, like I would not maybe react in the same way, or maybe I would given a different circumstance and different life trajectory, right? Like who knows? Um, but like, I gotta, I, I gotta make room for them, uh, which doesn't mean like uh, having to agree with everybody's behavior and uh, doesn't mean being in a doormat when people may be treating you poorly. Um, but there's an ability, I think, in spiritual resilience uh, to make room for other people as well. Uh, in all of the ways that we're seeking uh, to just find comfort and cope uh, during this time. I think it was the first time I was feeling that this past week. And so I'm like, yeah, there's, there's many people that are probably walking through this too uh, in their own way. So uh, yeah. There's yeah. I, um, you, both of you, um, Masando and Abigail said something that sparked this memory of one of the readings for this month, actually in Science Mind Magazine. Uh, Reverend David Alt, who I love, shout out to him. He's an incredible uh, teacher, mentor, and uh, minister. He wrote the daily guides for this month. And one of the conversations he and I had way back, and at first when he said it, I was like, like I, I, I was not offended, but I was just kind of taken back. He said, your pain is not important. Um, how did he explain it? Um, he said, your pain is not special. And I was like, what? No, my pain is special. Like this is authentically mine, right? This is, this is the narrative I've attached to it. And I really had to go deep with that one. Um, and he, he expands on this in the, the actual daily guide, but to just kind of go into what you were saying, Abigail, as far as like, and, and Masando, the ho holding the space for everyone, it really speaks to the humility and the amount of compassion that we as humans are able to have when, when you think about it from that stance, like I definitely believe, and I said this earlier, that pain is information. It's just, it gives me contrast and it helps me wake up. But at the same time, I don't have to be self-indulgent in my pain and making it so important that it, it, you know, it's not as important as anyone else's. And so when I keep that in mind, then it really allows me to take a step back for a moment and, be, and you know, to really be like, man, like you said, Abigail, I have it great here. And um, I'm so grateful that I'm I, that I have uh, employment and am doing the work that I'm passionate about. And I'm, I am more fortunate and privileged than a lot of people. And so with that in mind, then those little things that Trader Joe's in the line wrapping around or, you know, all of the little quirks that we are having to relearn and navigate right now are almost just not as important because I'm keeping that in mind. So I had to add that to the conversation because I thought it was really good. Yeah, I know I just talked, but I think something else that's been going on during this time that's been really beautiful and really hard at the same time are everything that's being revealed to us uh, in our society, right? The health disparities, the inequities, the way that this pandemic may not discriminate between people, but our systems sure do, and how those systems and the unhealth uh, of those systems are really be, being revealed right now. And there's an opportunity in any spiritual practice as things become revealed personally, that's an opportunity for healing. And uh, the same thing's happening for us collectively, right? Like, I hope that, my hope is that, my intention is, is that the, as these become revealed to us on larger levels that we do something about it and we do something about it uh, that can have changes uh, well into the future, right? Because it's, it's like the veil is just being like, you know, it's so thin right now. Like everything is being revealed to us 
uh, collectively. And so what are we going to do with that information? Uh, are we going to rebel against it? Are we going to say we, we can't look at it? Are we going to say that's just your opinion? <laughs> or are we going to say like, oh, wow, we have to take a look at this. Let's do something about it. Yeah, I think that like that level of discernment that everyone's talking about, right? Like it gives us this opportunity to be present with one of the four agreements to like, to not take things personally, to really understand that this is really hard for me. So it's really hard for everybody. And I don't know that like collectively as, you know, as human beings, we've really been able to connect with one another and that understanding that we're all sort of walking through life with this pain that is not unique to us. And, and, and now it's just sort of at the surface because we're all in, in a similar place around our pain and we're all coping with it in healthy and not healthy ways all at the same time. And we're watching each other do it. And we're watching each other do it on Zoom and Facebook Live and Instagram Live and wherever the hell else everybody wants to be broadcasting their stuff. And we're, wa we're, like, we're watching everyone be present with it. Sorry, I had to curse because Brian's not here. Um, and, and, and we get to just, we get to see it and be present with it. And it is so much at the surface that we also get to understand like all the places where we do have it pretty good and all the places where, you know, other people are experiencing a different kind of pain that we were not even aware of. And here you are, like it is, it is here for you to see. And we are all being vulnerable with one another in this way so that we can hold space. And as spiritual beings, as ministers, as practitioners, that is actually what we signed up to do to hold this space for everyone exactly where they are. And that means that we get to first be really compassionate with our own pain and, in, and to know that like, yes, I'm, I'm a minister, I'm a leader, I'm a practitioner and I love the world in this way and I'm, and I'm not doing so great today. And yesterday this other person might not have done so great. And so now we can hold this space for each other and love one another in that. And all of the crud that's coming to the surface, man, like all of the inequities, all of the places where like safer at home might not actually be safer for some people, where, you know, being at home might not be a comfortable place for people to be. And they are now in this for eight weeks, 10 weeks, however many weeks this goes on. And how can we hold space? How can we be present with that? How can we love one another through this? Because that is what we've all come here to do, regardless of of whatever titles we're wearing. Um, so, and that just speaks so much more to like, not even just resilience, but to the work that we've come here to do, to be with one another and, and to love one another. So, yeah. yeah. How that how that work actualizes for all of us, you know, is the continued, like uh, the continued opportunity and gift, right? You know, the, the um, you know, what, what, how that comes to the surface. And, um, you know, and I think we're all, you know, continuing to ask ourselves those questions and, you know, hopefully questions that continue to, um, you know, move us in a, in a direction of not only honoring what it is right now, but also looking forward and saying, okay, what it is that I can do, you know, uh, for, uh, to be compassionate, to be, you know, uh, contributing to, to hold the space to, you know, how can I, you know, um, uh, continue to be uh, that vessel, you know, or make the vessel bigger, you know, in, 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 in any case. So, it's really, really great, you know, conversation. And as we kind of bring our, you know, bring our time this this month to a to a to a closing spot, you know, I'd, I'd wonder if there's a, you know, any other, um, you know, last components or or thoughts that we'd want to leave leave with right now, uh, and um, and then we'll pray out from there. I just kind of, I, I feel like we oftentimes we talk about opportunities for growth and opportunities for transformation and to be better versions of ourselves. And, and yes, we do have that opportunity, but oftentimes when we're in the weeds, like that's where we are, like we're in the weeds and, and yes, there is hope. And there is like this understanding that there's something on the other side of that. But I think there's just, there is so much value to being just in the weeds and to really just being present with our pain and to be able to let people meet us there and to be served and to be serving other people from that space. Like it, it also just has some value. Like it has some value to let someone hold our hand or to ask for help when we need it. And, and I think that that's just such an important thing to be present in that moment, even when it hurts, that I just really want to address that. And I think we've all sort of bounce back and forth between those two polarities but i know that 
a lot of times when people are listening to new thought ministers and maybe to this group of unicorns as we were just called in the chat that like we 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 put the sunshine out there and yes there is so much sunshine here but man there is so much like time to be spent in the dark where where something beautiful gets to happen and and so and and i think abigail and savannah like everybody we've all done a really good job of sort of touching on that but i just really want to honor like anyone who's in the weeds and hanging out with us today mm -hmm. um because it's a pretty beautiful place to be and and we yeah. hear you and we are we've all been there i'm just gonna say that i don't know that we've all yeah. been there but i'm pretty sure we have <laughs> and there's yeah, been some, yeah so and and yeah. thank you for coming out of the weeds to hang out with us today yeah so yeah. powerful Reverend amanda it's like and have compassion for yourself during that time and that's something that's really been on the forefront of my mind there's days when i wake up and you know, before all this happened, like working, speaking, traveling, doing all this stuff with my business. And then like finding myself even recently, like feeling like this lost feeling and realizing like, I don't have to run from that lost feeling. I don't have to like try to replace that feeling with all of a sudden, like this injection of inspiration that is going to be shortly lived because there's been no real compassionate shift inside myself. And like really being willing to be compassionate during this, this whole time with ourselves. And if you're not, if you, if you feel you could be doing better, it's okay. You can still love yourself in the moment, appreciate that, embrace that. And there, there are blessings in that. Mm -hmm. So thank you for kind of driving that point home for me. That, that really hit home. I think that really speaks to like, the, this is a spiritual practice. It's called surrender it's like letting go. Like when you're having a really crappy day, like just let go and cry. <laughs> like just, just really feel it and just be in the crap for a while and allow it to process your body. I mean, that's the, that's why I had like a health condition happen. I had to, like my back was completely out of whack and I could barely walk. And it was because I wasn't feeling my feelings. I was like, everything is great. Everything is great. And then my body's like, no, it's not. And it took me a good couple of days of crying and being upset uh, and really feeling the grief that was processing through me. Uh, and it felt crappy <laughs> and I was in the weeds and I feel so much better. Like it, it was so good to just like let it go and just like be in it for a bit and just feel all of that that was going on instead of like resisting it and just like really surrendering to it and allowing it to flow through me in order to, you know, get to a place where I felt better. Yeah, the comment you made earlier about skilled and unskilled, just another kind of way to, you know, for me to think about the weeds, you know, is that, you know, the, for me, the tendency in the weeds is really is a place where I'm, you know, really have no, it's uncomfortable. I have no kind of, you know, uh, you know, if I feel like I'm not able to move or, 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 or get out of it, or I need to learn something, or I need a mentor, I need a model, I need something, you know, to kind of help me, you know, move through that. And so I'm continually, you know, touched and, and thought uh, a lot about that idea of, you know, it's okay to be unskilled in all this, you know, uh, it's okay to be, you know, it's okay, it's okay to begin to develop, you know, uh, you know, move up the ladder, so to speak, you know, on that, on that, on that from skilled to unskilled. And, you know, and, and maybe you may not get skilled, you know, on it, but, you know, that awkwardness of, of, of being in the weeds, that, uh, that uncomfortableness of being in the weeds, you know, um, uh, it just continually comes to me of like, those are just those unskilled moments, you know, where um, it doesn't mean I can't find a way to become skilled in it. Um, but in the moment, you know, I'm going to be with it as it was, as it is and, and find, <laughs> find the fastest way out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, but you know, it may not be fast. It may be slow. You know, whatever. You know, I'm not in control of those situations most of the time. Um, as a, as a husband and a parent of two two wonderful six, seven, and four year olds. Um, but the, um, but yeah, I mean, it's all. You know, uh, I appreciate that perspective today, guys, very much. Yeah, I think the last thing I just want to put out there is like, this is sacred time. Like there may be things that are coming through our own experience that maybe we couldn't have gotten to had we not been walking through the weeds together like this. Um, there may be some things in the world that are seeking to come through that could have never happened had we not been walking through this together. And it's also an opportunity to take care of each other 
in our understanding of how deeply at one we are, how deeply interdependent we are. There's an opportunity for us to really not just feel into that, but live into that in a deeper way right now. Uh, it's scary, it's crazy, it's annoying AF, it's frustrating, uh, and it's sacred. Like this is all sacred. So uh, let's find those moments where we feel that the sacredness of this time and let's not miss them. I was preaching there, sorry. Good stuff. You were just talking to, to, to me, you know, nobody else. No. Cool. Reverend Savannah, you have something you want to add? No, I was just, close? I just, I'm just saying this is all good stuff. It's it's just, I'm really grateful we're having this conversation or had this conversation. <laughs> I think you all nailed it. <laughs> um, well, I want to give a plug before we go. Uh, or allow Savannah to give a plug for Savvy Chats uh, that happens every week. It's the opportunity to spend some time uh, with Savannah who is just chock full of wisdom uh, and grace as you uh, have gotten a little taste of today. Savvy, you wanna give a little plug for your Savvy Chats? Yeah, so I am leading a weekly event, Savvy Chats. Uh, my nickname is Savvy, so it kind of stuck. Um, it's just a, a weekly time for us to come together online um, I bring a new topic every week. Uh, this week actually is about the wisdom and the power in our pain and um, how to transform pain. And also, um, let's see, the, all the information for that is on my Facebook page. It's also on my IG, so Savvy Noel. You can find it in uh, the link in my bio. So 6.30 Pacific time every Thursday, um, come join. It's, it's, it's a really, um, it's a cool community that we're, we've started, so. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Nick? Should we just have Savannah pray us out, maybe? Yeah. The uh, you know from from a uh, you know as as we continue to, to dive into these conversations, feel free to leave us any comments about you know topics that are up for you, topics that are happening uh, in your world. Um, you know that we can continue to bring some uh, some light you know to. So uh, that's what we love doing. You know, as a group, is uh, is bringing light to these conversations every month, the second Wednesday of every month, uh, and so look forward to that next opportunity to do that. And Savannah, thanks for joining us, and we'd be honored to have you kind of close us out with prayer. Absolutely. So first, I just want to say thank you. Um, I, as I said before, I have really wanted to be part of this energy and this consciousness. So let us uh, go into an inward moment for a moment. <sighs> just giving gratitude for the feeling of exhilaration that I have right now. It's that feeling of what is possible, that hope that we speak to, of absolutely knowing that we are co-creating something so magnificent and so amazing with this power and this presence that we tap into in every moment. We have the choice and the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into our own inner knowing, into our own connection with life itself. And so I am just so abundantly grateful and blessed by every single person on this call, as well as all who have tuned in and who will watch this later on our live stream page. I am just so grateful. I'm grateful for the platform that we have to absolutely speak these truths into existence in such an amazing way, because this is such a, an important time for us to be speaking this truth into the world, to inspire and to uplift and to transform, truly transform all the stuff that's happening in the conditions of the world. And so I am just abundantly blessed and grateful, thankful for this opportunity that we have and all of us have to go a little deeper, to surrender a little bit more, to absolutely be compassionate and gentle and patient with ourselves during this time and to trust that there is something far greater that is unfolding and happening for each and every one of us if we just allow ourselves to be present in the moment to it. And so with that, I give thanks. I am so grateful. And I say, Ashe, and so it is. Amen. So it is. So it is. Thank you. Our beautiful ones. Thank See you, you all here uh, next month. Till then. Love.